My life before I came to Change Challenge was just a mess. I was in addiction for 20 years. I lived on the streets. It was just addiction after addiction, every addiction. Even though I had four children, people say, yeah, you had something to live for. I didn't. They didn't even want, make me want to live. Nothing made me want to live. I just wanted to die. I was dependent on, on, on a substance to get me through the day and, and, and I realised that coming through that, you know, I, I, I devastated so many lives, I cheated on so many people, I hurt so many people and, and I let so many people down, including myself. I always got involved around people. My life was just a big, it's just a vicious circle. It wasn't even a life, it was an existence. Nobody wanted anything got to do with me. I felt that I was alone in this world. I felt that nobody wanted to help. We, we first started off, we had a heart for um, street work, and we started off with just a pot. And we used to minister to the drug addicts and stuff on the street. And then we opened a coffee shop. And from there, we used to actually take people home to detox. I mean, these kids, well not kids, they're, they're young women. They literally, their lives were in the gutter. And we met a young lady on the streets, a 22 year old girl. She's been on heroin since 11 years of age. Um, and we found her sleeping alone in a sleeping bag in her own urine. We gave her some tea and sandwiches and soup and tried to feed her, keep her warm. Um, I just got down my hungers and asked her, what's her dreams, what's her ambitions? And she said to me, I just want to be a cleaner and she took out a tube of toothpaste and a toothbrush and proceeded to clean her teeth. And here she was just sitting around, sleeping in her urine, half of her head on, on heroin, but yes, she still had that bit of, she wanted to be clean externally, but I knew she needed to be clean internally. I was an addict, and uh, Teen Challenge outreach to me uh, many years ago, and they provi provided a place for me to go. And At the time, there's no Teen Challenge centres in Ireland through lots of prayer and, and prayer groups supporting us and standing with us in the vision to establish Teen Challenge, um, Shechem House for Girls came on board. For once where young girls caught in prostitution, heroin addiction, crack cocaine, alcoholism, are now set free through the power of God. People turn to addictions, they turn to drugs for many reasons. Um, you know, lack of self-esteem, perhaps they've been in the schooling system, they didn't learn much, they didn't do great in their grades in school. Um, they got taught out of school early, or maybe never even went to school t as much as they should have. So they started to get educated on the streets. Somewhere along the line, they've made really bad choices. So I just got caught up in it from going just out the way, or like young people would start going out, going nightclub, and then and just getting introduced to small things at the beginning, and then they just build up. Because to me, like I, the first time I ever took my first drug, I just kept continuing chasing that high. It is so simple to become addicted to, to drugs. And before you know it, you're just in the middle of it. There's no way out. My parents splitting up was a big blow. I didn't want to live in reality. Well, some of the girls coming in now will uh, be coming from a place of um, brokenness, a place of family breakdown. Um, they, went, they wouldn't have experienced um, nurturing to the way they should have. The Teen Challenge is a place that's known for its tough love. Um, these lives that come to us for help are totally chaotic. They're like a train off the tracks. It's all self, inwards, just feeding self with, with their own desires and needs and wants. It's a highly structured program and it's quite disciplined at first. Um, from classroom instruction through their work duties, um, through their personal development classes and their personal studies, through their cleaning duties, through the responsibilities <clears throat> and tasks that are given to them on a daily basis. What you're doing with them is you're putting in a disciplined structure into an unstructured life. It's just setting you up for the outside world. And as they allow God to work in their lives, they will progress. They're all um, they're learning the ECDL course at the moment. So they'll actually be leaving with some basic um, computer training also. Teen Challenge believe in the total cure for the total person, so it's a mixture of, of a lot of things coming together. To see past the addiction, to see past um, the brokenness, and to see the people that's behind this. When you come in here and you just see people so caring and loving, and they just want what's best for you and not what's best for them. When you, when you pass by 
people on the street who are addicted and you see them maybe in a doorway with a bag or what you know one little bag with all their belongings and collecting money and it's hard to envision that they have a purpose and that God created them with a purpose and he has a plan for their life and I suppose they come here and within a couple of weeks the difference that you see is amazing you know. Ireland has always had a history of exporting problems. I done my programme 15 years ago and at, the, at that time we'd no facilities for uh, in-house rehabilitation so I had to go over to uh, uh, Wales. And our vision was always to have a centre for men and women. Through the mercy of God, through the grace of God, through his provision, that Teen Challenge Girls Home has been established. And in more recent times now, we have um, a men's centre. Uh, Teen Challenge Tiglin, County Wicklow, has now been established to, to cater for the men folk. It's a refuge for people to come in and get their broken lives changed by the love of Christ. Putting all these people in prison doesn't answer the problem. So the, the programme in itself is, is, is really good to get it for the discipline area and for training them and, and equipping them. Um, but at the end of the day, it's their relationship with God that's going to bring them through. He's my saviour. He saved me from the pits of hell. From that point on in 1995, that my life turned around and it's never been the same since. There was one particular girl uh, shortly before I retired and uh, she appeared in the court and she looked like a young, almost like a waif. You don't look past today. You don't look past your next fix. When I look at that waif that stood in front of me, I cannot believe that it's the same girl. I suppose when you're stuck in addiction, you don't have any dreams. She is now actually going to go to Trinity to do psychology. I suppose it's like a, a caterpillar coming out of a cocoon. They begin to get wings and see that, yeah, I can, if I put enough effort in, I can achieve things and they begin to get dreams that they never did. I had my first visit out three, two weeks ago and the first thing my ma said to me was, are you asked being on TV three getting an extreme makeover? <laughs> I mean, we've had some guys and girls in the girls' home and men's home that their potential and their giftings are, are, are tremendous. And, but they just never tapped into them, never, they never capitalised on them. But to actually see somebody coming through and change and see them going to college and to look back on photographs of where they've been, it's, it's worth, it's worth everything. And you know, Teen Challenge is a ministry that's dependent on support. We get some, some government funding um, and we're very thankful for it through the Health Board and Task Force, Drugs Task Force and that, but it goes beyond that. So we really need people to um, put their hands in their pockets and to see the work and to see that it is, is a valued work and it is a good work. People who just have a heart to see a life changed. The more money that comes in, the more help that can be given out to these girls and the more expansion that can be made on the programme. And, you know, in any way and in every way that people can support this ministry to allow us to, to raise up the mothers and the fathers that have been lost to families, to the daughters and the sons that have been lost to families, to the, the future generation, to the now generation. You really have to look at them and see that God has created them for much more than this.